Welcome back to the NRL Punters Weekly Digest. My name is Ben, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the Round 17 NRL team list. I'll be giving you my tips for this week's upcoming NRL matches, and I'll also give you some betting tips that will hopefully wet your whistle a little bit and line your pockets. Hopefully. 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 But before we get into this video, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel and you'd like to stay in the loop of all my content, please give me a little subby sub sub subscription and please turn on your notifications so you can stay in the loop of all that content. And obviously if you like this video, I'd appreciate a like. I like the feedback and I would be greatly appreciative. Let's get into it. This last week of NRL matches, we had three teams kept to nil. I can't remember the last time that's happened in NRL history. I'm sure someone could pull a stat out of their bum and make me look silly and go, hey, actually, what only happened a couple of seasons ago. Whatever. I don't care. I guess, I guess what those score lines vindicate is that the new rule changes, you know, the run, the 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 ruck infringement six again rule is working and the teams that have prepared for these rule changes that have uh, maybe not necessarily catered their rosters to, but have definitely adjusted to the rules and played accordingly are thriving. Those who haven't, those are, who are still behind the eight ball are really struggling at the moment. Hopefully by the time we're into round 17 next season, the rest of the clubs have caught up with the top end, you know, top four to six clubs that are doing things right so that we have a more even competition. Because, look, whilst it's cool to see teams get destroyed by a ridiculous margin, i.e. Manly destroying the the, the Bulldog 66-0, it's cool to see, but it's also kind of boring in the sense that it's like, you know what, even if it's your side that's winning by that margin, sometimes at halftime you're like, you know what, I don't need to see the rest of this. You know, the missus wanted to go out for dinner anyway. I'm going to I'm gonna pull a sly one here and, and surprise her and go, you know what, I don't need to watch the rest of this game. Let's go out to dinner, you know? Anyway, that's all i got to say about that. Let's get into this week's NRL matches, starting with the Thursday Night Clash, which sees the aforementioned Manly Seagulls taking on my Canberra Raiders. Last week, as mentioned, the Seagulls won 66-0 against the Bulldogs. There's really not much to say about this one other than it was an absolute bloodbath. The Seagulls scored 11 tries to nil. Two of their players had hat tricks. If you have a look at the highlights, it honestly looks like a bunch of first graders playing like an under-20 side, an under-16 side even. It, the Bulldogs were never in the contest. It was embarrassing for them. For the Raiders, embarrassing for them also. If you want to talk about embarrassing score lines, they lost 6-44 to against the Titans at GIO Stadium. That is, hands down, the most embarrassing Raiders performance I've seen at home in some years. And I have been following this club for a very long time. I actually turned off the game with 15 minutes to go. I was so incensed, embarrassed. I was disgusted. The Raiders lost... Sorry, the Raiders missed a total of 65 tackles. 65 tackles! 65 tackles! The back line itself, 1-7, to seven, missed 32 on their own. The only unscathed player... From criticism in this game should be Josh Papali'i, who didn't miss a sing single tackle. And he ran for, I think it was 170 plus meters. When he was on the field, they looked like they might be able to do something. And that was the only time. It was an absolutely disgusting performance. I don't expect things to change this week against a week a weakened Seagull side. You know, they're missing two of their star playmakers in... Daily Cherry Evans, who's playing for Queensland, and Tom Travojevic, who's obviously playing for the Blues. Does that mean they're still not going to, to flog the Raiders? Of course they're going to flog them. Maybe by less points. Who knows? 
In the head to head market, you'll get $1.20 for the Seagulls, which I think is quite generous. I would have been giving them $1.02, to be honest. And you'll get $4.40 for the Raiders if you think they can do anything. May I suggest you don't touch that odd there? And the reason being is that Ricky Stewart hasn't done too much to vindicate you putting any money on the Raiders. He hasn't changed too much at all. Um, even taking into some of the injury, some of the injuries that the Raiders have got into consideration. Let's have a look at the team list. Sorry, I jumped ahead there with the betting. Let's go back. Team list wise for the Seagulls, uh, Tommy Turbo and DCE out um, with Origin uh, duties, obviously. Uh, Dylan Walker has been named at halfback. Ruben Garrick moves from the wing to fullback, and Mo Moses Suley comes onto the wing. For the Raiders, bunch of changes for them. Uh, Bailey Simonson is out for up to six weeks with a toe injury. He was, look, his first hit out at fullback was his best. For mine, he's been a bit uh, since then. But let's be honest, the whole team hasn't been going well. So maybe I shouldn't be too critical of the young guy. Elliot Whitehead is out for a week with a shoulder injury. Xavier Savage, who did slash didn't make his debut a couple of weeks ago because of that whole 18th man mix-up saga he's actually starting at fullback and I can't wait to see this kid rip in even though I know we're going to lose I can't wait to see how he goes he's a very exciting prospect um, Hudson Young comes into the back row for Elliot Whitehead and Matt Frawley comes into the side to play 5-8 I believe Head-to-head uh, -head market, already we've gone through that. $1.20 for the Seagulls, $4.40 for the Raiders. Anytime try scorer bets. Now, I should, uh, before we go any further, I should let you know that I'm canning my bet weekly best bets videos for the simple reason that they just weren't garnering that much attention. There are YouTubers out there that are specifically dedicated to betting, like their whole channel is about NRL betting. I'm going to let those guys do their thing because they're so in-depth with the analysis and they do a fantastic job and they've got a great fan base. I'm going to can the, the, the best bets videos and I'm just going to give you my bets in my weekly team list, you know, preview video. So anytime try scorers I've got in this game, if you're looking for a bit of a flutter, Ruben Garrick at $1.85, Jason Saab $1.50 and a bit of a smoky here, Xavier Savage from the Raiders. Assuming they even score any points, $2.60 for him. Uh, margin betting tip. I'm going to give each clash a margin betting tip. This is directly linked to who I think is going to win the game and by what margin. Seagulls 13 plus, $1.75. I think they're really good odds for that margin, to be honest. You'd think they'd be a little bit shorter, but no. And I'm tipping the Seagulls to win by 30 in this clash. <laughs> Friday sees Souths take on the Cowboys from Stadium Australia. Uh, last week, the Rabbitohs beat the Tigers 38 to 22. Um, but they shouldn't take, they shouldn't really take too many positives out of this clash, at least in the second half. They were up 26 nil at halftime and they squandered that lead to lose the second half 22 to 12 to a Tigers side that they should have totally put to the sword. Word to the wise, South Sydney Rabbitohs. If you squander a lead come finals against one of the top sides, if you're able to get the wood on them, I'm talking like a Panthers, a Storm side. I don't want to say so much Roosters because they're kind of neither here nor there at the moment. But any of those top sides, if by some measure you get ahead of them and you squander that lead, goodbye Premiership Souths. Honestly, you should be really, really disappointed with that performance. South Sydney is a club full of consummate professionals, so I assume they would be disappointed. I'm not telling them anything they don't already know, but really disappointed with that performance, if I'm being honest. Cowboys on the other end of the spectrum didn't lose. They lost 38 to nil against the Knights. And look, they fell prey to a Newcastle Knights side that if they can keep their star players fit, are building very nicely for a finals charge. You know, they've got them all back. They've got Ponga back. They've got Mitchell Pierce there. You know, Kurt Mann's back in the side. They've got uh, they've got all the guns there. They've got all the guns. And if they can stay on the park and fit, they're a very, very dangerous prospect. In terms of team changes, too many to mention for the Rabbitohs. Bunch of origin reps out. Please refer to the team list. 
And for the Cowboys, uh, Hamaso Tabuai Fido is playing Origin along with Francis Molo. I think Frankie Molo is uh, 18th man. And obviously Val Holmes, uh, which means that Dejan Arzi will earn his first start at fullback. That'll be very interesting to watch because I know he's he's a young Cowboys junior with huge wraps on him. And Connolly uh, Lumelu returns from injury at center. In the head-to-head market, you'll get $1.15 for the Bunnies and $5.25 for the Cowboys. If you think the Cowboys can bounce back this week, I mean, those are juicy odds. I don't see them beating Souths. In fact, I have Souths winning by 20 points this week, even without some of their stars. They don't lose their Haas pairing, though, and that's, as we know, the linchpin to their attack. In the anytime try scorer market, I've got Alex Johnston at $1.45. I think he's a special. Campbell Graham, $1.95. Good odds for him. And Cody Walker at $2.30, because I just feel like this is one of those games where Cody's just going to He's going to go for a run, and he's going to score a try. Margin betting. South 13 plus, obviously. I've got him to win by 20. You'll get $1.65 there. Saturday evening, we've got the Doggies taking on the Roosters from Bankwest Stadium. Back in the day, this would have been a blockbuster clash. Nowadays, it's not so much because of the Roosters, but let's be honest. It's the Bulldogs. We know what it is. Bulldogs are building nicely for next season in terms of their roster. So I don't want to I don't want to heap too much negativity on the Bulldogs because I, I want to see them get back up to the top of the table. It's they're like the it's like the Broncos, you know, a, a strong competition traditionally always has the Broncos and the Bulldogs towards the top of the table. It's it, it feels weird for them to not be up there. Uh last start for the doggies, well, they got completely trounced by the Seagulls. I mean what can you say? They were terrible. They conceded 66 points. And didn't score a single point. 66 points. And didn't score a single point. Roosters, on the other hand, lost uh, 46-0 to the Storm. What do you say about that performance? Yeah. They lost by 46 points. And didn't score a single point. 46 points. I was very surprised by that particular result. Not as much the Bulldogs' result. Obviously, the margin surprised. But the Roosters, I actually tipped to win last week, if you watched last week's video. So I was totally stunned that they didn't even score a single point. It was just, it was unfathomable for mine. Uh, In terms of team changes for both sides, please refer to the team list because there are just a million changes and I'm not going to sit here and go through them all when I make you this really nice visual for you to refer to. In the head-to-head market, you'll get $7.50 for the Bulldogs. Don't waste your money. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. eight for the Roosters, which is probably too short, but, I mean, let's be fair. They're not going to lose this game. Anytime try scorer market. Joseph Manu is playing fullback this week. I like it when he plays fullback. He's, you know, he's one of the best centers in the world when he's playing in the centers, but I love watching him when he's at fullback because it's a slightly different dynamic. He gets his hand on the ball a little bit more. Hands on the ball. Hands, plural, not just one. Always carry the ball with two hands. Unless you're Joseph Manu, where you're pretty safe with the one hand. Dollar eighty-five for him in the anytime try scorer market. Daniel Tupo, a dollar forty-eight. And for Matt Ikavalu. $1.42. In the margin betting, I'm going Roosters 13 plus at $1.34. I don't think there is any other bet if you're looking at the margin market at the moment. And because the because the odds are so short in anything Roosters, you might want to combine those into a multi if you want to take advantage of those short odds. My tip in this game is the Roosters win by 40. 40 points. Last game of the round because we've only got four matches in this shortened round as a result of Origin. I believe after this week, there's no more buys. We're back to normality. Eight games a week. Very easy to follow. Sharks, Warriors from Net Strata Jubilee Stadium. Last start, the Sharks won, lost. The what? Lost. They lost. 26 to 18 to the Broncos. And I was actually at that game in a corporate box. Compliments of my employer, loans.com.au, who are a major sponsor of the Brisbane Broncos, along with their parent company, First Mac. 
And I wish I had... I wish I had some commentary on this game, but if I'm being honest, I spent most of my time drinking, eating good food, having some really great footy banter without actually paying too much attention to the game. You know how it is. You're in a corporate box. You know, it's more about the atmosphere. It's more about the camaraderie, all of that. It was a very, very, very entertaining game, though, I must say. I had a, a bloody good time, all in all. Whilst not really paying much attention to the game. <laughs> Warriors will last start losers to the Dragons in Golden Point. They conceded a 12 to 6 lead and had their hearts ripped out of their chests by Corey Norman, who this week was fined $50,000 for his involvement in the um, uh, COVID party gate scandal, which I'm not going to talk too much about. You would have read about it in the papers and 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 heard about it on TV. It's all a little bit ridiculous. Paul Vaughan, very, very naughty, very, very naughty boy. Very, very naughty. I honestly, I don't want to get into it. I, I was legit when I said I don't want to get into it, but I will say this because this upsets me. You as a professional sports person in this country, in a world that is affected by this worldwide pandemic, you earn a lot of money you're revered by fans and no doubt you have, you know, women and, and men, you know, lusting over you and, and looking up to you like you're some kind of God or what have you. And all you got to do is behave. All you got to do is behave within the constraints of the special rules so the competition can go on because we've got pockets of COVID-19 breaking out all over the place and whether or not we think it's justified having these lockdowns is completely irrelevant. The game has to go on. You've got to abide by the rules. Paul Vaughan, you're making $800,000 a year. $800,000 a year, Paul Vaughan. Hello, Paul Vaughan. Hello. Moron. That's where I'll end that, moron. All right. In... Team list, team list changes, team changes for both these sides. For the Sharks, Matt Moylan was a late omission before the Brisbane loss last week, and he's going to be out, I don't know how long for, potentially an extended stint due to his calf injury, which means Connor Tracy comes into the halves, which is very interesting. Um, I didn't realize Connor Tracy spent some time in the halves, speaking to a, a mate of mine from work at the game last week and he basically gave me the heads up. He's like, he's very handy in the halves. So I'm very interested to see how he does go in the halves. Uh, Will Chambers returns at center and Braden Trindle moves to the bench. For the Warriors, Reese Walsh, who unfortunately missed out on his origin debut, returns from injury at fullback, which pushes RTS to the wing. Cody Nikarima also returns from injury at 5'8", while Chad Townsend and Tohu Harris have both been ruled out with injury. In the head-to-head -head market, you'll get $1.53 for the Sharks, $2.45 for the Warriors. In the anytime try scorer market, Will Kennedy, $2.15, I think is a good bet. Also, Jesse Ramian, $2.40. That guy's fast. That guy's super fast. It's one thing seeing him fast and strong. It's one thing seeing him through the TV, but when you're actually at the game, you get a, an appreciation for it. He's, he's a player. Reese Walsh, $2.20. That's my little smoky there. In the margin betting, I think Sharks is going to win this. Sharks are going to win this one by two points. So the Sharks 1-12, to 12, you'll get $2.94, I think is a really good bet. I think this might be the game of the round. I think it's going to be a really, really tight one. Hence why I've tipped the Sharks by two. That's all I've got for you in this video. Let me know what you thought. In the comments section below, let me know what you're punting on, what you're betting on, um, what your tips are. I'm always interested to see what people are doing out there. Um, and, you know, give me some feedback. Uh, I've had some good feedback recently. Uh, it's constructive feedback. You know, not 100% positive, but definitely constructive. I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts are on anything. If you think there's something that I can do better, think that there's something that I'm not doing very well, that you don't think is engaging, entertaining, let me know. I can always adjust things. You know, I can adjust for you. Let me change for you. And also, if you like this video, thumbs up. See you in the next one.